if you, at this moment, are not particularly aware of being a body, you are not alone. At least, when we explore philosophical literature on the body, we soon realize the body has often been neglected. Indeed, some philosophers have observed that Western intellectual history has tended to be disembodied, or when the body has been discussed, it has been downgraded to a secondary or an oppositional role to the mind or spirit. While there has been some forgetfulness or distaste for the body in Western intellectual history, some philosophers, such as Nietzsche and Foucault, have emphasized the bodily dimension of human life. For example, Nietzsche critiqued what he called the despisers of the body, declaring that our desires and passions arise from our physiology, and if we kill passions, we also kill life. And the philosopher Maurice Merleau-Ponty, who is often declared as the philosopher of the body, argued that the body is not just an object in the world, it is our general medium for having a world. We do not experience the world through pure rational thought, but through embodied perception and expression and our ability to move. Beside from that, we seem to pay little attention to our bodies, not only in philosophy, but also in our everyday life. Philosopher Drew Leder argued that the body has an intrinsic tendency towards hiding itself from our awareness. As he noted, we focus on what we see and hear, not on the role that our eyes and ears play in the process. As such, the disappearance of the body is not only a symptom of our modern lifestyles, which require little physical effort due to all technological advances. In his book, The Absent Body, from 1990, Leader describes three dimensions of the body. First, the ecstatic body is the body that engages with the world when cooking, typing on the computer, or walking to the grocery store. I'm typically not aware of being a body, even if all these activities require the body. The ecstatic body is absent. It is not the object of my perception. Second, the recessive body is the internal organs and processes that make up my body. Like the ecstatic body, the recessive body is typically absent. Most of the time we are not aware of the internal processes of the body in our daily lives. However, if we were to have a stomach ache, the recessive body would become momentarily a focus of our awareness. Third, while the two previous forms of embodiment relate to the body's tendency to be absent or disappearing from our everyday experience, it is what Leader calls the disappearing body that brings the body to our conscious awareness. This word creation from dysfunctional and appearing describes the paradox that our body only appears to our conscious awareness when it is in physical, or social dysfunction. Moments when the body might refuse to do what it is supposed to do, when it is in pain, injured, or in disease. Or perhaps when we feel uncomfortable or different from people around us because of a situation that made us aware of our gender, race, or physical abilities, for example. We stand out from the group of people around us. What has this all to do with our digital age? Well, philosophers of technology have argued that technologies are not just neutral tools, but they profoundly shape human experience of being a body. Martin Heidegger is one of the most well-known philosophers who inquired into the nature of technology. Well before we had become glued to our laptops and smartphones, Heidegger argued that we have entered an era characterized by a technological understanding of being. He meant that in this technological age, we come to understand everything, things, people, as resources to be used and optimized. For Heidegger, our modern technological age has meant that we approach life 
with a calculative thinking and to see the world around us as resources to be used for our own projects. In this worldview, the body is another resource that needs to be optimized through the right type and amount of food, exercise, and sleep. If you think of all the digital tracking tools available to measure and enhance our bodies, does this sound familiar to you? Heidegger did not want us to get rid of our technological advances. However, he warned that this technological worldview was narrowing our horizon and hiding other ways of experience in the world and ourselves. Yet, some later philosophers have emphasized that different technologies can have different implications for experiencing our bodies and the world. Don ID observed that technologies can strengthen or weaken our sense of embodiment and our relationship with the environment. Eyeglasses allow us to see the world more clearly. Sports equipment allow us to explore new movement possibilities and new ways of being a body. Technology also makes it possible to observe our bodies in ways that are not accessible to our normal perception and thus increase our knowledge about the bodily functions. We are now gathering an unprecedented amount of information about our bodies in our apps and wearable devices and sharing it in various social networks. By collecting this information, we strengthen our awareness of our bodies, but perhaps also hide other elements of the embodied experience.